Hello, I'm Mariella Frostrup, writer, broadcaster, and the Observer newspaper's agony aunt. Today, I'm going to try and help a group of people who have problems that are very different, but share the same root cause. They're all stuck in an Ingmar Bergman film. Hello, please help. I feel like everything in life is me v me. I'm always weighing up what I want against what I want. In addition, my best friend is lying to myself. Worst of all, I'm having an affair with my husband. I'm so confused. Put Put plainly, plainly, I, I, we, we don't don't know know who who I, we, we am, are anymore. anymore. Hello, you two. Thanks for your letter. The most important thing is that you've decided to talk. You don't need to suffer in silence, and nor should you. I know things are confusing right now, but sometimes life doesn't make sense. None of it fits together. One minute you're ticking along happily, the next you're being beset by all manner of strange thoughts and images. A morgue, a tarantula, the crucifixion, the odd subliminal penis picture. Don't lose yourself. Try to hold on to things you're certain of, no matter how slippery. In the short term, it's the effort that's most important, not what you achieve. Most of all, don't compare your hand to someone else's, even someone very close to you. It's bad luck. Instead, realize that nothing is ever black and white. While you're living in the murkiest of gray areas, you have it all in your armory as a woman, women, woman, to make it through in one to two pieces. Vad är du för en människa egentligen? Eller tänker du kanske så här? Det där ansiktet det ska komma ihåg. Det där tonfallet, det där uttrycket. Jag ska ge dig så du inte glömmer. Dear Mariella, I am 78, a celebrated physician and financially secure. I live a quiet life with my housekeeper. I have a son and a grandchild on the way, but my relationship with my family is strained. They've told me I've been callous and selfish, often cold. Recently, during a road trip, I met some new, much younger friends. They're a wonderful company, though since meeting them I've been having troubling dreams. In one, my ex-wife tells me I've never cared about anything. In another, the worst, I see myself in a coffin, carried along a road, in a horse-drawn hearse. I feel I must change, but time is vanishing from me. Is it ever too late to be a better person? Or at my age, must we always live in the past? Isaac, how lucky you are. You've been given, or given yourself, a great opportunity. Let's pretend for a moment that your family are right. You have been a cold, callous, selfish man. You've shunned them and ignored them for decades and they despise you for it. But you've heard them now and begun, even subliminally, to take some of the weight of the guilt for your behavior on board. You are, perhaps, guilty of guilt. No great sin. It's up to them if they choose to forgive you it. I bet you found your young friends idealistic, hopeful, even naive. But these behaviors aren't just the property of the young. They just find tapping into them easier. So keep yourself open to the positives in these feelings at any age. 78, 98, 108. And there will always be something in life worth sticking around for. Dreams, especially those that frighten us, are tricky things to take too seriously. But in your case, they seem to have led you to an epiphany of sorts. So use what they've taught you. There's little point in wasting time and energy on regrets if you're not going to learn anything from them at any time of life. The past is full of moments we can't change. It's too late for them, but it's not too late for you, ever. Mariella, I am death, ender of the light, harbinger of nothingness. I am an unstoppable and inevitable force. Why are people constantly challenging my authority? 
See you soon. Don't worry. Not too soon. Um, hello, Death. We're a small, frightened lot, one that somehow worked out who and what you are and discovered that we didn't like you one bit. Sorry. We've developed across myriad cultures throughout our civilizations a passion for ignoring or sublimating your work. You can take solace, I guess, in the fact that huge swathes of human development wouldn't exist without you. Art, science, religion, recreational drugs, jogging. Could you try seeing our resistance of you as a mark of respect, perhaps? You're feared and wondered at in equal measure, and that has to count for something. In the great game of chess, black always wins. There will be four suns in the heavens before we do away with you for good. We might not like you, but we can't fob you off forever. Thanks so much for your letter, and don't hurry back. När vi möts nästa gång i din och dina följeslagares tid, ute. Och du uppenbarar dina hemligheter. Jag bär inte på några hemligheter. Så du vet ingenting. Jag är ovetande.